G.I. Joburg is the codename for South Africa's daring, highly trained review force. Their purpose? To provide reviews and information on the finest G.I. Joe toys from past and present. Today we take a look at... The Phantom X-19. Last great G.I. Joe aircraft. Two-seater. Functioning landing gear. Neon highlights. The Joe's first true stealth aircraft. Armed with two BY-106 Little Guy long-range air-to-air missiles. Two Bullseye 3 air-launched cruise missiles. And twin energy-diverting pulse-fire laser cannons. Her triple turbojet exhausts propel her at a maximum speed of Mach 3.6, and she has a maximum range of 2,780 nautical miles. Phantom is aptly named as a stealth aircraft, more so than the Phantom F4. No relation. It is, however, heavily influenced by the concept art for a next generation stealth plane, the F-19. This aircraft never saw full production that we know of. The X-19 drives the stealth from a combination of factors. Low infrared profile thanks to an embedded air intake and heavily baffled internal vectored high bypass engine. Ferrite granular epoxy non-reflective skin finished with radar absorbent black ball paint. And it no doubt also has a full suite of electronic countermeasures for scrambling enemy detection systems, but they are too secret to be disclosed. It could be classified as a blended wing design, which improves stealth by reducing angular airframe components. However, the X-19 takes this concept a step further. It has no wing to speak of, but rather a perfect teardrop configuration. It mounts a rear-facing radar, no doubt improving its threat detection. A cruising speed of Mark III doesn't hurt its stealthiness either. The Phantom X-19 made its debut in the G.I. Joe A Real American Hero comics in issue 76, and enjoyed a number of outings. It saw use as a bomber, destroying a pair of bug amphibious vehicles, and knocking out the radar systems on Cobra Island in its debut. It also conducted a perilous mission into the Cobra-occupied Emirate of Benzene, to photograph Cobra Terrodrome installations. It functioned as an unmanned drone on another mission to bomb a Cobra installation on a remote island designated CTS-4, but was shot down en route to target. For each of these sorties, the X-19 was launched from the USS Flag aircraft carrier. Sadly, the toy is not designed to attach to the Flag's arrestor hook, as the Ventus Skytracker does. Nevertheless, the toy possesses a host of features. A very unorthodox sliding canopy and fully sculpted cockpit interior. Crew is secured using black seat belts, typical for this era of the toy line. The comic appearances correctly place the pilot in the forward position. The control columns are side stick configuration instead of between the pilot's legs. A manually operated air brake. Abundant engine detail beneath. And a more complex landing gear system than the preceding Sky Striker and Night Raven. It has not been surpassed in its engineering finesse since. In a parallel with the Night Raven, there are two versions of the landing gear mechanism. The earlier version, which is activated when a flat tab simply slides back, and this later hinged version, which slides and locks. The mechanism also causes the jet exhausts to extend. No idea why. But it's pretty cool. Rubber tires allow for good grip. But the sheer number of tyres at 12 and the awkwardness of the mechanism means that not all of them make full contact with the ground. It is not the freest rolling aircraft to be fair, and the nose wheel has a tendency to cave in on rough landings. The laser cannons are housed in the wings and flip out as the wings extend. Allegedly these are not for air-to-air -air or air-to-surface attacks but rather for anti-satellite warfare, suggesting that the X-19 surface ceiling is on the edge of space. Neon sexiness. And the air-to-air -air missiles mount on top. Carrying ordnance externally is not really a hallmark of stealth. More neon sexiness. The cruise missiles slide out from under the fuselage and deploy their wings by simply rotating 90 degrees. Their profile, particularly in the blueprints, bears a strong resemblance to the Phantom itself. Suggesting that they too may possess stealth attributes. Neon! 
The X-19 enjoyed a cameo in Taxan's G.I. Joe video game title for the Nintendo Entertainment System, where it deployed an infantry team of three via parachute. Toy has no such capacity. Captain Jonas F. Jeffries is infamous for not being infamous. His file card and comic appearances make him out to be instantly forgettable around other Joes. They battle to remember his name, or that he is even a member. This is actually a practiced art. His file card insists that true stealth is not only a technical feat, but rather a state of mind. Not being noticed is a discipline that Captain Jeffries applied to his lifestyle, and by extension, to his job. As a pilot, he possesses nerves of steel and superhuman skill in order to push a rather unforgiving aircraft, in perilous nap of the earth flying only a few feet over the ground, all the while keeping his sensors and guidance equipment switched off to further avoid detection. It is a popularly held belief that he goes unnamed in the comic book, not only because associated characters cannot remember his name, but also to avoid a trademark issue with Marvel Comics' Ghost Rider character. But since the motorcycle riding demon was published by the same company that published G.I. Joe, and was spelled differently to Ghost Rider, the pilot, this is probably erroneous. The sculpt is anything but unmemorable. From a detailed kneeboard map, a real fabric scarf, reverse mounted pistol belt and shiny silver retro looking helmet, he is a very handsomely sculpted and detailed figure. Almost a waste to keep him in the aircraft cockpit when steaming piles of crap like Skidmark, ride around in the Desert Fox six-wheel drive for all to see. But you can always play out your pre-flight checks and after-action reports in Admiral Keyhole's office, if you own a USS flag. The Phantom X-19 will cost you anywhere from $70 in played with condition, with no pilot or packaging, to mint and sealed box for three times that. Note that the specimen used for this review is the European version, but its only distinction is in the stickers. There are no United States livery, and the yellow color on the skull logo and danger markings is now red. Things to look out for are stress marks on the fuselage where the vertical stabilizers attach, the clarity of the cockpit glass, and canopy functionality. Note that even mint specimens battle to close completely flush. The rubber nose cone also breaks the smoothness of the lines and hurt the aesthetic more so than on a Sky Striker. Be sure to note whether the landing gear functions smoothly without snagging. The gear doors function using an elastic band, and naturally these wear out over time. The doors themselves are not on an actual hinge, but rather just bend open along a thinner strip of plastic. These are prone to stress and could break from overuse. We tend not to display our phantoms with their gear down as a result. The later variant is very robust, though I have a personal preference for the less obtrusive earlier model, even if it means the landing gear needs a little extra encouragement to come down or retract. No danger of snagging the runway as she lands. We hope you liked G.I. Joburg's review of the venerable Phantom X-19. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss our next episode, and do comment on this video. Cheers. And remember, more neon.